When you think of Brentford, you probably think of Ivan Tony, but now that he's left the club, it got me wondering how do Brentford fans actually feel about Ivan Tony? So in today's video, I've gathered together Brentford fans and also neutral fans to ask them how they actually feel about the England skipper. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video. I think my thoughts on Ivan Tony going to Saudi Arabia are well documented. I think the overriding kind of emotion that I feel is one of disappointment for him on a personal level. I know there's no love lost between Ivan Tony and Brentford fans, but for a long period of time, we all thought that he was good enough to play Champions League football and score in Champions League football. I really thought he would be the missing piece in Mikel Arteta's puzzle. I know that's a very common analysis, but with the way that Kai Havertz plays, I think Ivan Tony is a similar kind of player and he's better in a lot of facets of his game. So. I was disappointed to see him go to Saudi at so young. At the same time, he's played in the lower leagues for most of his career, so I can completely understand why he's gone to earn that sum of money every week. It's absolutely insane, and it's very easy for someone to say you should have stayed in the Premier League when you're not being offered that kind of money. So, yeah, I have, I'm very thankful for the memories that Ivan Tony's given Brentford fans, but, yeah, I'm disappointed for him because I think he's better than that. Ivan Tony, and I will say this with confidence, is the best player to ever play for Brentford. I don't care if sometimes he treated us poorly. He is, without a doubt, the single reason why we're in the Premier League today. I know we've been surviving without him. We did last season with his ban and stuff. But, yeah. And he's shown massive respect to us. He even went to our, last, uh, our first game of the season you know, after his, his transfer went through, which I thought was a nice touch. But, yeah. Four years in the Premier League, two in the Championship, couldn't have asked for more for the England international. And I wish him the best of luck in Saudi Arabia. Hopefully he's back in England soon so we can see him again. Even Tony, yeah. Uh, I was trying to keep this short, but it's going to be hard because... We all have a lot of uh, of things to say about him. He's a very special player, uh, for good and for bad. Does his talking on the pitch and not in the media. Uh, when he said for Brentford, he went on to score a hat trick against Leeds. So, if that's his way of apologising, then I don't mind it. But nah, I I get it. Like, uh, what what he said, like in the media, it can be taken out of context and it can also be seen as disrespectful. To me, I, I, I'll let him do his talking on the pitch, obviously, because uh, he helped us so much in the 22-23 season where he just became the third most scoring player in the, in the league. Uh, pretty impressive from him, uh, considering he, he knew, he, knew he was going to get banned uh, he's ice cold, he has a strong mentality. Um, yeah, and I'm very sad to see him go to a Saudi club. Um, but I don't know because um, I don't I don't really know where else he should have gone to, uh, considering his age and uh, and that he only had like one year left on his contract and Brentford wanted to sell him. We already bought his replacement in Thiago that went on to get injured. But yeah, nah, I couldn't really do anything. I'm happy that he wanted to go to Saudi because we had no choice uh, but to sell him that window uh, with the window we had. Um, I mean, in some way, we both win because we got paid the amount of money we needed and he earns a shitload of money. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's, uh, it's great. Like if you, if you see it like that, but to me it's just sad that he isn't playing for a Champions League club. I think he's good enough for that, and I think he's been good enough for that f since we got promoted. Yeah. We can all agree that Ivan Tony was absolutely brilliant at Brentford. Scored countless goals, helped Brentford get so much higher in the Premier League. However, does he go down as a Brentford legend? I don't think so, on the basis that. He has been wanting to leave for quite some time. Wasn't always available, so to say. And, yeah, he literally kind of disrespects us quite a lot. Brilliant player for Brentford, but 
his legacy is kind of pampered by his attitude. So for me, he is not a Brentford legend. I do wish him great success in his future career, and I bet he'll perform brilliantly. Yes, people, it's Murphy Magic here. I got a DM the other day off Mr. Brentford Ivan himself asking me to talk about the man that was born to play with his legs. Yes, Ivan Toe Knee. Oh, I'm so funny. And yeah, so I'm just here to provide a little bit of a more non-Brentford perspective on the last few years he had and why he chose to go to the Saudi Pro League, in my opinion. So I'm going to split it up into three quick sections. Firstly, his ability. You don't need to be a genius to know Ivan Tony scores goals. You can see his goal record here. Boom. Pretty impressive, right? But for me, the evidence of his raw talent can be seen pretty recently as after having his extensive ban for gambling, he only managed to score four goals for Brentford in the last 17 games that he played. So based off that, I bet, wrong choice of words, you'd probably be surprised to learn that he got an England call up for the Euros ahead of someone like Dominic Solanke, who'd just come off the back of an excellent season for Bournemouth, 19 goals, earned himself a 65 million quid transfer to Spurs. But... Uh, despite not getting that many minutes, Ivan Tony really had an impact on the tournament for England. He got an assist for England's winning goal against Slovakia in the last 16 when they looked down and out. He came on the pitch, England immediately scored, and then as soon as extra time started, they scored again after a wayward shot from Eze. Goes into the path of Tony, he looks up, knows exactly what he's doing, guides it beautifully to Harry Kane to score the winner. That added to his obviously famous penalty against Turkey, where he looks the goalkeeper dead in the eyes the entire time and still slots it beautifully in the corner, shows that form is temporary and class is permanent, and Ivan Tony is class. The second thing I want to talk about is his more divisive personality. Um, this has only really seemed to become more public knowledge recently, with uh, videos coming out of him saying, fuck Brentford, and he was asked about where he played, and he said, no, we're exciting. So that could just be because he's a millionaire footballer that likes to be a bit cocky. You know, we saw him post that having a kickabout with the lads tweet after the, uh, Brentford beat Arsenal. But I think it might be something deeper than this. Uh, and I think for one reason or other, he was actually quite unhappy at Brentford, which brings us into the third part of why he's joined the Saudi Pro League. Whilst it's true we're seeing a lot of high name talent starting to move to the Saudi Pro League, the majority of these players, as we know, are coming towards the end of their career. Tony's only 28. He's also, in all likelihood, thrown away any chance of playing in the World Cup in 2026, which doesn't seem to make any sense to me, because surely he'd still be on the radar after his good performances at the last tournament. For me, there's only two logical reasons for Tony to take this offer to go to the Saudi Pro League, when he could have stayed just one more year at Brentford, ran his contract down, and had, within reason, the pick of his clubs to join. Option A, he's really motivated by money, and that's all he cares about. I mean, I've got Twitter Blue, who am I to talk about? cashing out, taking a paycheck. Not my Muppet Magic, right guys? Um, all the alternative is, he just felt like he had to get out of Brentford and this was an opportunity that was there for him to take right now. I don't want this to come across that uh, Ivan Tony's always been unhappy at Brentford. I think far from it. But it has, from my mind, seemed that recently he's become disillusioned with the club. Hence why the club actually didn't mind about selling him as much as other clubs in a position of Brentford might have expected them to. So, to conclude, from my like non-Brentford perspective, I do think Ivan Tony's a class player who chose to leave Brentford when he had the chance to in the summer because he became disillusioned with the club. That's my opinion. I obviously don't have the, the inside sources. But I also think it's going to be the reason why you won't see him lining up for a big six club this season or even next season. Shameless plug, uh, I also make YouTube videos. Please come and find me. My name's Murphy Magic. Uh, and more importantly, go subscribe to Brentford Hive. If you're watching this video, what are you doing if you haven't subscribed yet? We both know he deserves it. Just quickly come off full screen, press that subscribe button in the corner, get back on the video. I appreciate you again, Mr. Hive, for having me on the channel, mate, and enjoy the rest of the video, guys. Ivan Tony is an interesting player. For me, arguably, he is still a very, very, very good striker. Um, obviously, he originated at Newcastle through their academy. Um, for eventually going through a bunch of League One, League Two. Obviously, Peterborough was the team he really shined at, which caused Brentford to go and move from in the Championship. From there, um, went up, played really well for a year, played really well for another year. Specifically, his second la second season, which was the twenty four goal assist season, in which he was the third place Golden Boot. Uh, he was third place in the Golden Boot, and I mean, obviously, then he had a lot of interest, but obviously, he had a little. Uh, in gambling ban was a betting ban um which essentially something but um that would amount for i think half a season and then the half of the following next season 
and during that time he was uh, sl slating off Brentford a bit but mainly <laughs> he wasn't it was the, in sort of the back of people's minds came back in January this was a chance to really remember you know, get people to remember him and no one did it was completely forgettable unfortunately um, but there was a lifeline obviously with his Euros performances mainly against Switzerland really that was the one which really reminded people he still exists he's still a very decent player um, I mean the no look penalty is very iconic it's absolutely brilliant it really is just a brilliant brilliant it's very ballsy of course but and I think it sort of it really his Euro performance has really bolstered a resurge of demand because he had a lot more links popping up but they all died because Brentford wanted more money considering he had one year left on his deal mainly because he, Igor Thiago had been injured which is fair enough I don't really see um, how it's their fault that they wanted more money considering their only other striker option was bloody injured so I don't I really don't mind that um, and I'm happy with Solanke anyway as a Spurs fan so but obviously he went to Saudi Arabia instead of going to one of the top sort of level clubs he was getting linked with and it shocked a few people um, I was one of them um, it was a deadline day deal I think pretty sure um, and he, it's a bit it's a bit sad it really is but I can't blame him for the money I think that that is one thing you can't blame him for what I do blame him for is his age because I think he's still relatively young even for a footballer relatively young he he still can get to that level he was in the 22-23 season and obviously he's not going to do that in Saudi Arabia the playing field is terrible so I mean the money will be nice but as a footballer I do believe it's a very disappointing move indeed but you know again the money's good I can't entirely blame him <laughs> I would probably take it I'm not going to lie I don't think I can refuse it so yeah but yeah he's a for me a very decent striker still just wanted to give a massive shout out to everyone who's taken part in today's video. All their channels will be linked in the comment section below in the pinned comment. Not all of them have YouTube channels, so I will link their Twitter account instead. But massive thank you to everyone who took part. And like I said earlier in the video, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. And go and check out all their channels in the pinned comment below. Until next time, bye.